Grace and peace. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Brandon, and I saw the Lord. Now, I didn't see him in a piece of toast or in a dream. I really saw him. Essentially, I heard the gospel and understood my sin in light of a holy God, and it changed my life forever. Now, I want to share the gospel with all who will listen. I even wrote a book as an attempt to communicate the gospel. So for the next 40 weeks, me and my brother Brent will give a commentary on each chapter. You'll learn, you'll laugh, but hopefully you'll get to see the Lord as well. Love you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, grace and peace. Uh, it's your boy uh, Brandon uh, here with uh, Brent. Another episode of I Saw the Lord last week um, was our first First episode, I think it went off really well. Um, Brent did a great job just kind of directing uh, and uh, asking these questions. Um, so hopefully you guys get an opportunity to check that out on SoundCloud, iTunes, even threw up some videos on uh, YouTube. So uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, hit a like and support, share. Um, so we're really excited. We're back again for another episode. We are diving right into the book, um, talking about what gives you worth and value but before we jump into that did want to clarify the name of the podcast is i saw the lord it comes from isaiah 6 probably uh one of my favorite verses it uh, goes in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord high and lifted up and essentially um isaiah um, had an encounter with the lord and my favorite part about that is is isaiah's response um, it wasn't one of, you know, joy and excitement. Um, Isaiah says uh, he pronounces a woe upon himself. He says, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Mm -hmm. And we just see this response of a, of a sinful man before a holy God. Um, and, and God didn't crush him. Uh, in fact, God was commissioning Isaiah out to go and speak to the people of, of Israel and to uh, be a prophet to them. And so it, it resonates with me because when I heard the gospel, um, I understood my weight, my sin in light of a holy God and I understood what I deserved, but mercy was shown to me. And because of that mercy that was shown to me, I have no choice but to tell people about the good news of the gospel. So I know we didn't touch on that the last episode, so I just wanted to make sure that correctly uh, identify what the name of uh, the podcast is and the reason behind it. So without further ado, we're going to get into uh, this uh, first concept. What gives you um, worth and value? What a strong concept. Okay. What's going on, family? It's good to uh, be with you guys again. B and I just sitting here getting ready to dial into it. So what gives you worth and value? An incredible concept. Uh, it's about four pages on this concept, but this concept starts and it, even if you want to argue it just it is the foundation oh, absolutely. of the gospel absolutely. right it is it is literally showing the uh, uh, the amount of love God has for you right but how are we going to break down this worth and value today man so we, I want to look at it uh, Brandon in twofold no in a twofold way. I just want to bring it in the sacred and secular divide. Okay. All right, but I want to start with the uh, with the secular first. So first of all, just talk to us about that concept. What gives you worth and value? Um, like you said, it's foundational to understanding um, hu uh, God, but not just God, but humanity. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe many of our problems stem from not having a proper understanding of what gives you worth and value. Like I said, these, these concepts, the way I kind of structure them are universal. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or unbeliever, whatever you believe, you believe in God, you don't. Pretty much everyone can agree that we have worth and value. Right. Now, I think to what extent do we have worth and value? Like uh, take for example, uh, and I didn't really touch, well, probably I did, um, sports, for example. Mm -hmm. We see one player makes X amount of money, one right. player makes, so in that sense, one person has more monetary worth in right. that context than another person. Right. But we understand that 
that's not necessarily the case when you look at the grand scheme of things. Just because someone makes more money than me, it doesn't make that person more worth, uh, have more worth than me. Right. Um, and just like you said, starting from that, that uh, secular, I believe the first, because of what I wanted to do was argue not necessarily strictly from a biblical worldview. I want to mm -hmm. argue as someone who's seeking truth. Right. So if I'm not coming from a biblical worldview, how do I answer this question? And so I tackle philosophically, right? You know, intellect, and I, and being in the realm of academia, I see how how that that works out. Right. Hey, I've got bachelor's, master's, PhD. Right. What you got? Right. High school degree. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like that doesn't make me any better than you. But so oftentimes we we elitism, right? You know, right. comes from this idea of because I know more than you. Mm -hmm then I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of took that approach, but I kind of debunked that because I say there's so many people who are not educated mm -hmm. who have contributed to society. We look right. at, and I'm probably gonna, might be wrong, but I think it's one of these guys, either Steve Jobs or one of these like billionaires who didn't go to college or Bill Gates or one of them. I can't, I can't it's think. It's about 80% of them. It's, it's a lot of these billionaires <laughs> who didn't, didn't go to college, didn't have this, you know, robust degrees, but look what they've contributed to society. Right. Um, and so I kind of debunked that theory that just having just some sort of intellect gives you worth and value. And so then I move on to just the, uh, uh, psychological side. piece psychological yeah. piece, a sociological yeah. um, piece, just um, especially in this day and age, I, um, I deal with, you know, family, you know, what gives us, if, because so many people cling to that, and, and these are all good things, there's nothing wrong with it, but the problem with finding worth and value in these things are that they're conditional, mm -hmm. um, like I said, intellect. So if someone is smarter than you, does that mean that they have more more worth and value? Right. And um, I touch on work after I just finished. I talk about the MBA work because I've got some sort of job. Like my father, he worked in sanitation for the majority of his life. Now, is he less than the person who, you know, is in some other aspect of government because all he's doing is just picking up trash? Right. You know, and so just just wanting to to really dissect or analyze what gives us worth and value by pointing to the things that give us worth and value or let's say you know someone who lives in a, a house in comparison to someone who lives in the projects or someone who drives a nice car to someone who has to take public transportation right and these are the things that we kind of categorize people and kind of say hey um i have more worth and value or this person has more worth and value because of these other things i'm a big um uh, sneakerhead, you know. <laughs> if I were to show y'all my closet, it'd be a little embarrassing because I got like three hundred pair dollar sneakers in there. Come on, you know? man. And Come it's on, like, man. and it's like, um, am I really finding my worth and value in these things? Am I thinking that I'm better than someone who got some pay less on? You know, right. does, does this make me worth have more worth than them? And it's like, it's it's a conviction and a challenge to me. Like, you know, not to say that there's anything wrong with it, but I think the error comes when we think that makes us better than someone else. And you hear the crazy stories that, you know, people getting robbed and killed for their sneakers. And right. it's like, it's not that serious. Come on, man. Like, you're, you're <laughs> missing the whole point of life. The whole, <laughs> the whole fascinating factor, man, that, that this, is, this is something precious. When I, when I look precious, when I look at it, man, I'm, I'm thinking, a person that compares or tries to categorize another person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to look at it and say, man, really, that person is playing his part yeah. or her part. Mm. That's the bigger uh, message or the bigger jewel yeah. in worth and value. Mm -hmm. I may not be the top guy or the top gal, mm -hmm. but what I do in this association is play my part. And it's my piece to the big puzzle, mm -hmm. to the big grand scheme of things. And that's what we're doing in this whole thing that God has ordained for us anyway. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just playing our little part, man. I mean, we are we are his. Yeah. And but from a secular place, man, we can get to that place where, man, this guy knows more than me, or that woman knows more than me. And what we do is 
we start thinking on that level yeah. and it cripples us mm -hmm. to even go and make our lives better. Yeah. You know, it, it hurts us bad. So you can say, well, I can never get to that place. You know what I mean? Man, you on the team. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> this this guy can't, yo, you know, Michael Jordan, man, mm -hmm. the best, arguably the best, yeah. right? Who's going to argue with you? Michael Jordan was the man. Mm -hmm. But you do you think Scottie Pippen's complaining? You think Dennis Rodman is complaining? You think <laughs> B.J. Armstrong is complaining? <laughs> These guys are not complaining. They on the team. They're playing their part, and they understand, you know what? Jordan ain't going to win one game. Yeah. By himself. Yeah. Period. It take five. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So our part to knowing worth and value is knowing, man, I'm playing my part. Yeah. But can I get better? Of course I can get better. Mm -hmm. But 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 when you start looking at it, and I love what you said, this is the era yeah. where we make in saying, you know what? Two, I play my part. I'm 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 doing what I'm supposed to do, but it's only to an extent. Yeah. Because there's such more uh, a greater worth and value that the Lord wants us to see yeah. rather than what we want to see that's not even eternal here. Mm. Yeah. Right? I mean, how much do you want, how smart do you want to be? <laughs> how much money do you really want to make? <laughs> right? How many championships do you really want to win that you know at the end result don't yeah. matter? Mm -hmm. You did well with your life. But these things have no eternal, uh, uh, no eternal glory to it, man. No, no eternal ending to it. Yeah. Right. So we have to put the focus or shift the focus to that. So I love what you were saying, man. From a uh, philosophical and psychological place with that, because we can get that, man. We 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 can we can get that. I've seen guys, man, that uh, uh, attack knowledge from that perspective. Uh, I could have been one of those guys, mm -hmm. man. You know, just just knowing that. It's, it's not about what I know, but it's about how do I act with what I know. Mm -hmm. I think that's when we move into the sociological piece of this thing, the behavior. Yeah. Right? So, 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 so sitting here, B, I want to ask you, man, what, when you're looking at worth and value in your life, what, what are you placing worth and value on, right, that is not in line with the kingdom? Like, it's, it's not in line with what God wants us to have or to really be and to really be thinking about. Yeah, and the struggle with these things is they're good things. Right. Like finding worth uh, or, or riches or, or cars or family or anything that we place worth in intellect. Any of these things, they're not inherently bad. The, the problem is, is when we elevate them mm -hmm. over God. Right. Um, that becomes the problem. And so for me, growing up, um, where I grew up, I grew up in New York, um, and there you were either black, Hispanic, or Middle Eastern. And so for me, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always the tallest kid, always the lightest kid. <laughs> and so we didn't have white people in our school. I was the I white you person. Albano, man. I, 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 I had to. I had to put it where I had to graduate to light skin. You know, for those who who can't see, um, I suffer from SCS, and, and if you don't know what that is, that that's Steph Curry syndrome. So, so um, both my my parents are black. My mama black. My daddy black, I come out and I guess I didn't bake too long or whatever the case may be. Um, and so when you're a kid, it, it, you different. You different. And, and, and um, people will pick up on that, especially when you're little kids. And now as I get older, I understand the doctrine of man and just right. the depravity and the heart of man. Right. Um, just realizing that we would look for differences to exploit them mm -hmm. and ridicule another person. Mm -hmm. And I always want to be very careful when I say this because I don't ever want to play the victim. I think I victimize my friends more than they victimize me because mm -hmm. you learn quickly um, that everybody's got their flaw. Right. Everybody's got something wrong with them and mine's was just more obvious than the other. Right. And so it caused me to not get down, 
and and I would enjoy going back and forth, especially with people I knew. This is this is all we did was just crack jokes on each other. Right. But my thing was, like I said, before I even became a Christian, I understood the depravity of man, mm -hmm. um, not simply because of the the jokes and the ridicule I would receive, but what I would say to other people. You I would see. be just as yeah. as mean and as cruel to mm -hmm. other people because I was like, okay, you said that about me, I got you, and I was never. I could never freestyle, but I could yeah, write. Yeah. My pen game. <laughs> my pen game is sharp. So you give me give me a couple hours. I'm gonna roast you. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna roast you. And so I understood just just like I said, the doctrine of depravity and then even my own wickedness and responding with just as much vitriol that was hurled toward me. And so even though I know some people struggle with it, especially those who are biracial. Um, I can say I identify with them in a sense where it's like, these are my own people who would ostracize me. And so from early on, I understood racism wasn't just the white man who, who lynched black people. I understood that even my own people were just as mean and as cruel mm -hmm. because I'm just, I'm just like you, but a couple of shades lighter. Mm -hmm. And it's like, on the other side, I, I understand someone who you know, may have grown up where I think the perception of, of being light skinned is that you've got it good, but because I didn't grow up in the suburbs, you know, I wasn't like, you know, the other side. So I grew up mm -hmm. with people who who I was the minority. Right. I was the ostracized. And if I'm gonna be honest, it did hurt me, you know, trying to find fit in, trying to find that identity, where did did I belong? Um and so I was, it always was something that, that pulled at me. And so even when I became a Christian and I would, you know, filter racism, I would always filter it as a human condition, not something that plagued a particular group. It wasn't just the white person right. who suffered from this ailment. It was all people. It was a human condition. And so um, just realizing that, man, if I put so much stock in who I am, my race, it's like, what happens when I am ostracized? Mm -hmm. You know, when the hate is, and I, I don't want to call it hate, but like I said, the acceptance um, wasn't there in the sense where I was always embraced. And I think after a while, you become friends with people, they embrace you. Mm -hmm. But just immediately off the back, like you just said, albino, mm -hmm. or is your mama white, your dad? No, mm -hmm. both. You right, know, right. even my cousins would make fun of me, you know, right. <laughs> and they, they my family, you adopted, right. you know, they, they my family. Um, and so just clinging to, to, um, my identity was found in, in my race. And it's like, when I wasn't accepted by that, it's like, what, what do you do? And so becoming a Christian definitely helped filter all of that, where now as a Christian, as I was saying last week, I don't reject my culture, my race, but it's like I filter it through. I have, I'm sensitive to the things that plague my culture and my race. And it's like, how can I be missional to them? How can I understand that, hey, this isn't a black issue, a white issue. This is a human issue. This is a heart condition that anything, because like I said, you can have people who are all the same shade. Look at white people. They still have friction within that right even black people i think i was um listening to something just even in south africa how they would divide those in south africa because what their nose look different mm -hmm. or earlobes or something like that it's whatever amazing how far we go how far we'll go just to say hey you're different than me and because you're different than me i'm going to discriminate against you mm -hmm. and so now here in america because it's so obvious we can make these distinctions based off of of race or not even race, just skin tone, even within our own community, because in the black community, that's a huge thing. Oh yeah. Light skin, dark skin, all, all of this all of this animosity that we have toward each other and it's like we all the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we literally all the same. Yeah. Um and so for me that was always a struggle and, and if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I'm so glad my daughter has some color. <laughs> like I'm so glad and it's like even um and I don't think I've even said this um, publicly because I grew up with my stepfather and 
um, just finding validation in him, even I'm sure he would get the stairs, but he was dark skinned. Mm -hmm. And so um, like when people would see my mother, cause my mother, she's like brown skinned and then my stepfather and they're like, they see me and they're like, what's up? It don't make no sense. <laughs> and even my biological father, he's the same uh, brown skin as well. But it's like, like, what happened? You know, and just having to just come to the acknowledgement that this is how God made me. And it's like, my worth and my value is not found in that. Now, do I ignore it? Absolutely not. Right, right. Absolutely not. But when it comes to what is uh, elevated first, it's Christ. It's Christ that my identity is rooted in that because that's not conditional. That's eternal. Right. My, my, my stance with who Christ is. And because we don't identify with who Christ, when we see things that happen and we're faced with racism, it like cripples us. Because we're like, I find everything in that. Right. And when it's it's um it's uh someone comes against it, it's like the whole world is like yeah. is like shaken or even yeah. like, not even going on race, but it's like someone who all they're about is success, money. Right. What happens right. when they lose that success and their money, their whole life is down. Is down. Yeah. We so, see it. We so see that, it. that 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 was one of my biggest things that I found worth and value in it, not to say it's a bad thing, it's a, it's a great thing. But like I said, that's not the primary thing where I look to for my worth and value. My worth and value is has to be rooted in Christ because that's unwavering, that's unconditional, that's eternal, and that will um, that will never change. Um, not that your race will change, but right, it, right. Won't, it won't, um, anything that comes against it, it's like I'm, I'm firmly planted and where I stand with, with Christ, even any outside the distractions that we, we witness because of, of racism or whatever the case may be. That's good, man. I, I found I found my worth and value in my own righteousness. Mm. You know, I grew up, I mean, I'm not from the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't live that life. You know, I wasn't cut from that cloth. Yeah. You know, I never sold drugs. It was it was women in sports yeah. or having fun. I'm the party guy, right? I'm, I'm Diddy, baby. I'm going to walk in the club. I'm going to light it up. You know, we're going to have some fun. Get off the wall, bro. Come on, man. Get to the dance floor, right? Enjoy life. So that that was me. Mm -hmm. But be, but you know, but before that, man, I just I was I was uh from the church. Mm -hmm. My parents were that way. I mean, my I got a whole my whole family is dialed into the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it's strong in terms of my bloodline. It's legacy. Man. It's legacy, man. But I found, you know, my story meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. But what what changed me was uh, I always wanted to be somebody. Mm. I mean, somebody. I mean, yeah. I felt like maybe, and you know, hindsight, I could see, hey, man, it was really the leader in you poking at you or whatever. But I went about it the wrong way. And, um, you know, guys were, since I was in the church, I would see top-notch preachers. Mm come through the church, yeah. wreck the church. Mm. And then I saw they were giving their stories like, uh, they were giving their stories, man, of I used to be in on crack. Mm -hmm. I used to be in jail. Mm -hmm. Man, I was, a, I was a drug dealer. You know, I was a gang banger. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord did all of this for me, yeah. you know? And I was, I could remember vividly sitting in church one day, man, listening to this guy tell this story and I said to myself if I want to be like that then I need to have that a part of my story okay and I'm not even cut from that cloth <laughs> so all I did was insert myself into a world I really had no business being in mm -hmm. nobody does but but for me I think you know for others it's, a, it's their environment yeah. but for me I actually inserted myself into that life Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and because I found value and worth in that. Mm -hmm. To be somebody. Mm -hmm. You have to have a hard story in order for somebody, for in order for you to be on this huge platform and be successful and for people to to to, to really pay attention to you. That's not the case. Yeah. Man, I end up hurting myself more than I did. I always look back, Brandon, and be like, I wonder mm -hmm. where I could have been yeah. if I didn't even have that type of thinking. Maybe I should have even ran it across some people, some older men. Yeah. And said, man, this is what I'm thinking. I didn't even do that, bro. Mm -hmm. And so to find that righteousness in that story, man, and to be 
uh, thinking that, hey man, that's what I had to do because I found worth and value in that. I ended up hurting myself along the way in terms of my own, the identity that God wanted me to have mm -hmm. for Brent Wright. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, man, I hurt myself so much along that line. I didn't become fully aware of who I was probably until age 26. Wow. Mm. To like age 26. I mean, I'm 31 now. But I'm comfortable. I understand. This is who you are, bro. Mm -hmm. Boy, you're a church boy to the core. <laughs> <laughs> right? You ain't no drug dealer, man. You ain't got to be out there doing all that noise, man. Making all... The Lord loves. Yeah. Whether your story is bland, man, or it's just one of the most horrendous stories in life. Yeah. That testimony, man, God uses them both. Yeah. You're playing your part. Mm -hmm. Understand that. But I don't have to put... I understand that. You know what? My righteousness doesn't mean anything, man. God... Uh, my efforts and skills or reputations, listen, God does not need me. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard pill to swallow because God doesn't need you. Yeah, He yeah. doesn't need your work. Mm -hmm. he, he, he does not find value and worth in what you bring to the table. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Dude, it is nothing you bring to the table that's going to make the Lord even sit up yeah. to pay attention to it yeah. unless he is in you. And I knew that, and I, and, and you know, it was hard for me to swallow. And I said that he doesn't need me. He chose me to be here, and he has graced me to do what I do. Yeah, that's when my whole perspective of worth and value changed. So this was a concept, man, that was just like piercing to my heart, and it made me go back in reflection and say, man, even up until now, what are you trying to put worth and value in? Make sure that that's in a that's in a line with what God wants you to do. Let me tell you something, man. I live my life in such a way now, mm -hmm. comfortable. Yeah. My identity is in Christ first, right? My, yeah. I'm, I'm identified with Christ. Uh, I was talking to my father the other day, and uh, I was telling, we were talking about just being identified with Christ. And, and we said something, man. Do you know to be identified with Christ is the best thing <laughs> a Christian could ever be? Yeah. I mean, the first word in Christian is Christ, mm. right? The, 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 to be identified with him, that is all the value and worth you need Yeah. That, 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 that God will place on you. And man, when he said that to me and we were talking about it, I said, man, he is so right. And, and kind of going, going based off that, I kind of hit on this a couple chapters down the line where... Um, th there's really, I guess you make these uh, categories, but in all honesty, scripturally, there are only two kinds of people, those in Adam, mm -hmm. those in Christ. Right. Um, in Adam, God's wrath abides upon you. You have not fulfilled the requirements of the law. Right. In Adam, right. you are born in sin, you are a sinner, right. and you need to fulfill the just requirements of breaking the law, which right. is what? Your life. Right. In Christ, right. you have fulfilled the law. That's right. In this righteous demand. Right. And you have paid the price, what? In Christ. That's right. I've been, what? Crucified with Christ. That's right. So what uh, God's wrath abides upon you, like we spoke on last week, mm -hmm. justice must be done on your right. behalf. If you are right. in Adam, God's wrath abides upon it's coming. you. If you in Christ, Christ has suffered the wrath for you. Right. I want to be in Christ. I need to be in Christ. <laughs> be in Christ. Be in Him. Identify be with Him. I need that. Happy about it. Because it's like, like I said, just thinking of things judicially. What is your argument when you stand before the judge? Right. What argument do you have? Mm -hmm. The only argument that I have, I'm in Christ. Right. I'm in Christ. Right. That I've paid my debt. Right. I paid my sin debt. And what says Christ has nailed it to the cross. Right. It's like I always think, like, Scripture talks about God did not provide a Savior for the angels. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve a Savior. We, we think we deserve salvation. Right. We, we don't deserve it um, at all. And we've got so many people who, who just don't even... Um, realize that you don't deserve salvation but you were offered it right just stop and think of all the people who are going to stand before god and give some sort of excuse and god's going to say i provided a means of salvation and that beautiful i provide but not beautiful for those who've right. rejected it though right, right, it's right. like i provided a means 
for you to escape my wrath. Mm -hmm. And you said, forget that. You said no. It's not like he didn't provide a way for you to escape. Right, right. It's like I can I can deal with there wasn't no exit. Right. But bro, you telling me there was an exit and I didn't know? And not only was it an exit, people told me about the exit right. and my dumb self still sat there and, and went through it. And, and didn't and, go through it. And, and like he provided a means of salvation and it's like I want to be in Christ. Right. I want to be in Christ because it's like aside from that, my verdict is guilty. Guilty, right? Guilty. Um, so, so yeah. Just, just if we haven't answered the question, because I wanted to make sure each chapter is a question, and I wanted to make sure that I answered that question. What gives you worth and value? Right. And in more ways than one, essentially, what gives you worth and value is God. That we are made in the image of God, right. and that is what gives you worth and value. Whether you believe in Him or not, right? You have worth and value because you are made in God's image. image. Yeah. Um, and if you do not come from that paradigm, and that's the thing with um, atheists, it's like essentially what you're saying is you're more evolved than me. Because I'd be wondering, like I said, I, I try to think through things critically. If what I believe is wrong, I can I can accept that. But but stop and think about it. It's like if evolution is true, mm -hmm. why all of a sudden did people start believing in a deity? Like right. what? Like all what of happened? all of history <laughs> accounts for a deity. It doesn't account for yeah. a man evolving from an ape-like creature. Right. That only happened three hundred years ago. Right. You know. Right. So it's like, what happened to cause people to say, "No, I didn't evolve from an ape-like creature. Let me believe in a higher power." I think their answer would be, is that over time humans just started to realize that a belief in a deity just didn't make any sense. So essentially. Those who don't believe in a, in a, um, a deity are more evolved right. than us. Than, than we are. Because we're still archaic. Right. We're still thinking, oh, the sun, you know. Right. Like, that's where we get our life and, you know, all that, all that stuff. And it's like, no. From the beginning of time to the end, there will always be a belief in a deity. Always. You know. And it's like, you're finding your worth and value for having an, a higher ascent to knowledge. So what? You look down upon me. Who believes in God when it's the actual verse? You know, because I believe I have the truth, I have pity towards you. Right. And therefore I come to you with the gospel. Yeah. It's like atheism is just a religion because they're proselytizing those who don't believe in what they believe. They're essentially presenting a gospel. Right. Don't believe in this because what religion causes wars and most of the world's problems are due to wars. Right. So that's the problem. Right. So the solution is stop believing in it. Very Essentially, good. you're uh, you're presenting a gospel. Right. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. You, you've created a religion for yourself that you're proselytizing me who believes in a God to, what, don't believe in a God. And that's wrong all of that. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah. and you accusing me for holding stringently to religion, you have thus created one. Right. You know, right. so... My and I like and I like that man. I, I and uh those atheists, bro, they they they're thinking it's something different. Yeah. Uh it's it's very different. Uh but to be cre we always want uh and, and I say this man we always want mm -hmm. something special. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. Man is not satisfied without the Lord. Agreed. You know what I mean? And even if whatever your ideology is, yeah. you want more. Yeah. You're you're searching for something different. Mm -hmm. Right? But that void, man, that God old bruh, mm -hmm. something that can only be filled. So I think I I truly believe it, man. I, I truly believe that it is what Christ has done, put inside of us, is what fills that void and satisfies satisfies us the way we need to be. Yeah. You also talked about, uh, uh, and we'll get to the sacred part of this thing. I have you break down uh, what you just broke down, even a little bit more further, even a little further than that. Okay. Rolling into the sociological piece of this thing, mm -hmm. let's kind of be prophetic in the in the moment, man, and, and stay. When I say prophetic, just stay true to what's going on into the world today. I, I, most people think Christians are so wrapped up in the heavens that we don't see what's going on in the world. We don't know. We're not, you know, we're not dialed in. Yeah. But we are. Uh -huh. and how can we even speak to the issues? I remember being in community group, you know, and, and some people say, man, I don't even look at the news. 
like, man, why? <laughs> I'm not saying you gotta sit there and watch it top to you know yeah, top of the hour yeah, to the yeah. to midnight. Yeah. But dog, how are you aware? Mm. And then secondly, how are you praying with compassion? Yeah. For what's going on out here in the world. Uh -huh. So to to say that you don't know what's going on in the world is to say you know what my compassion level ain't where it need to be. Yeah. And I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm saying your compassion level you don't have any because mm. you're not even looking. You know so. Man, let's kind of talk about this thing. April 4, 2015. We just we have just witnessed the mistrial of Walter Scott. Yeah. Uh another killing of another black man. Yeah. Uh due to a taillight stop. Mm -hmm. And we see video come out of Mr. Scott. He's on foot. Uh he is he is fleeing from the police officer, uh Mr. Sledge and Officer Sledge and Slager and uh uh, he is shot mm -hmm. six times or uh, hit five times, mm -hmm. and um, he's dead. Yeah, and he goes to trial. Uh, Mr. Slager goes to trial, man. Can't get a unanimous decision, and you can't even get a unanimous decision. These 11 white jurors, one black juror, I think we one black, one, one black juror, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, uh, I want to hit it on this angle, man. Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. Okay. Is there worth and value to the black male species in our world today? Even seeing it with this case that's so prominent right now that's taking over the airwaves again. Mm -hmm. Amongst others, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, all of these cases, man. You, but, but, but right now, here it is. Here it is again. Are we finding worth and value in the black male species, man? Where are we going with this thing? Um, before I even address that, I want to make it clear that, and I think Brent would agree with this, we err on the side of justice. Right. Um, in any case, we don't want, I want to be very careful just coming to the defense of those who come from the same cultural context right. as us. Because if they've done wrong, justice needs to be done. So I want to make that very clear. However, in this particular situation, anyone who has two eyes saw a man <laughs> run away and get shot in the back. Yeah. Like, I don't know in what universe that is just, and that's not murder. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I don't understand it. Try right. to get the context of what's going on. I don't think it's justifiable in any sense that someone is running away from you. Right. That you shoot them. I think it's... No, you feel scared. You feel scared. You fear for your life. Shoot them eight times, and I don't know how guns work. It may just be a rapid succession. Get hit five times. Um, kill a guy. You go to trial, and there's someone there who thinks you acted justly. Now, I don't know <laughs> how to explain that. So, like I said, I just wanted to make clear that we err on the side of justice. Right. That, that's where we come from. Right. In this particular situation, it does not appear justice was done. Correct. So this and many other cases serve as an example that, hey, the only conclusion that we can draw is that the American judicial system does not place worth and value in a black man. Now, we can come up with the hypotheticals. If this was a white guy, if this was someone right, else, right, right. what would have happened? And I think we can speculate and say, that cop wouldn't have got home. <laughs> you know, I think we can speculate. But and I many think, will. Many will. Many will. Um, and I think we just need to be careful of that. But I think because of what we see, the only logic that we can come to is, hey, black men in society are not valued. Not simply because they get gunned down, mm -hmm. but there seems to be no consequences for the actions, for actions. of those who do the killing. And the thing that kind of scares me the most, and I don't know this for a certain, um, the thing that troubles me is not necessarily that um, the conviction that it was a mistrial, that, that does concern me. But like I said, I, I want to be coming on the side of justice. Mr., I think his name is Michael Sl Slager. Slager. Does he have any remorse? For what he's done, even if it was in his mind a just killing, you still took the life of someone else. Well, we know his prosecution didn't. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's like, I wonder how he feels if he's like relieved that, yes, I'm justified in what I did. And what I did. And it's like, that's, that's the thing that scares me the most. Maybe he is, I don't know. Um, but just from, I think just history, I think when these guys get off, they feel vindicated mm -hmm. in what they did as mm -hmm. opposed to, even if I was in the right, I still took a father away from his kids, a husband away from his wife, mm -hmm. that I did that. Whether it was a just killing or not, it's like, I can't imagine, even, I think we were talking about it last week, even if someone came and, and robbed and I had to take their life, there would be some sort of ounce of just right. like, I didn't want to do I that. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I had to do what I had to do, but right. I still took a life. Right. I still took a life. And, and even those who go to war, it's like, we can have our discussions about war, but these guys come back, they killed men. Right. Tens, if not hundreds of men, and it what affects them. Mm -hmm. It affects them taking a life. And so that that kind of troubles me um, the most. I wonder if there's any kind of just remorse over what they've done. But but to your question, I think from the outside looking in, if, if you're a foreigner and you're looking in to America and you see the things that go on, your likely conclusion is that the black man doesn't have any worth because no justice seems to be done on right. his behalf. And like I said, that's why something and answering what gives you worth and value is so important because right. what we do is we look to a, a, another human to validate what we are, what we, we are. already are in God. And it's like our validation, because any man can just say, you don't have any worth and value. I can strip you of your rights. I can do this, that, and a third. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean you don't have rights? Does that mean you don't have worth? Right. No, why? Because your worth and value does not come from man. It comes from God. Right. And if we don't get that, we're going to continually have these battles where, like I said, I don't have a problem with, with Black Lives Matter and what they represent. Right. But the problem that I have is we're trying to solve cancer by putting a band-aid on it where we think these social reforms these social changes can you know regulate the heart right they they don't right. there's got to be something deeper what will cause another person just to hate someone else because of how they look right you know judging is a good thing but we supposed to judge someone based on their actions not on their looks and their appearance right. but we judge people based on what they look and based on what we prefer as opposed to, did this person handle me with respect? Mm -hmm. How did this person deal with me? Mm -hmm. No, we oh we automatically assume that's a criminal right there. Right. I see him with his hood, his hat backwards. He's a criminal right there. And you have no. You idea. don't have no <laughs> idea. And that's why I kind of like um, even um, yeah, I can't really see, but you look at me, you you probably wouldn't think you know, I got my bachelor's, master's, working towards PhD, and it like goes against the norm. Right. It goes against the norm. And so, and I think even in our own community, black community, we have to struggle with that where we kind of prejudge our own people. Oh, my God. You oh, know? Yeah. I and have it, some time. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, come on. What, the, what is he doing? Come on, man. So, so it's know? like we, we, we have to be careful of it ourselves because we 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 have this misconception that judging is is bad when, no, saying something is good is a judgment. Right. But we're not supposed to judge based off someone's appearance. We're supposed to judge based off merit. Right. That's what we judge based off. And people don't judge based off merit. We just judge based off appearance. You're black. You're a criminal. Right. That's what we assume. Yeah. You know? And so, and so, yeah. So, I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, but, you, you, but, you yeah. did, man. I want to, I want to, uh, even when you were talking about just feeling remorse. Yeah. Let's go back to that for a second. Uh, we never know. We never hear... Even in all of the cases, yeah. you have never heard statements, yeah. right, from the police, from the, from the police officer. Yeah. You, you have not heard, even from the justice, I mean, the uh, police department, yeah. I mean, you don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. And you can, it can be assumed. Yeah. Hey, man, you feel this way. I mean, you probably feel mm -hmm. justified yeah. in what you did. Yeah. But let me go back, man, this statement from the prosecution. Mr. Wilson. Oh, I think, I think Dude, gonna we might same. be on the same page on this, man. But, but check this out, man. Look, look, she says they have to be held accountable 
when they mess up. Mm-hmm. We don't even get identified. Yet, okay. Okay. <laughs> and it is very, very rare, but it does happen. And she says, uh, she thought that Walter contributed to his own death. Bro, I promise you, I screenshotted this same thing. I'm not even <laughs> going to finish. She's going to say he contributed his own death because he was foolish for getting out the car. Foolish for getting out the car. Bro, how we got the same quote? I promise you I was going to read that same quote because she's what? <laughs> the, um, the, the, the senior um, pros- Prosecutor. prosecutor. Yeah. And I was like, I you're, can't believe. I'm like, you're in the judicial system? <laughs> and you're going to say because he got out of his car and ran, he deserved to be killed. I'm like, you, are you serious? You can't be serious. I wonder <laughs> could we say the same thing about your children? <laughs> or your people that you're in community with, or your yeah. mother, or your father. Yeah. Let this happen to them. Yeah. And then, could, let me say some statements like that. Man, the world will be jumping up and down. Man. Ripping me apart. I promise you, I, I, I got that same statement and, we, I was going to talk about. And it. that is what I meant. Do we... Is there any work in the life of the black male species, man? You know, and 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 it's and it's so and it's so good how we concluded it, but it's God gives that. Yeah. Not man. Yeah. You see what man will do and say mm-hmm. about your work. Yeah. About who you are. Mm-hmm. Man can only affirm the worth and value that God has put inside of you. Yeah. That's all he can do. Yeah. He can just affirm it. Mm-hmm. But you have to personally know your responsibility to the things of God. That's why I love the scripture said, man, cast down everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Mm. Cast that down. Yeah. I know what God has told about said about me. Yeah. I know how he has created me. I know that I am the righteousness of God. Yeah. I know that I know what God has put inside of me, right? Because I've done my responsibility of believing and accepting the work of his son, Jesus. Yeah. So now I am valuable. I am, I do have worth in the earth. Mm-hmm. Now he's placed a gift inside of me that I have to play my part while I'm alive. Yeah. Right? And so, but man can affirm what God has already done in our life. But man can't get it. Yeah. He can't get it. And we see what clearly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just the just the stupidity of this statement, man. This yeah. statement goes on so many levels. Uh, it's just it's just straight up wrong. So so uh, let me conclude with this: the secular result of worth and value leaves us empty. Mm. Yeah, but not hopeless. Yeah, not without hope. So now I want to transition, man. Let's talk about what is that great hope. What is the hope of worth and value? Someone out there, you're struggling with your worth and your value. You're trying to figure out, man, do I have worth and value? I hear y'all, man, I'm saved, but I don't I don't feel worthy. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't, I don't feel like I'm valuable. Well, let me tell you something. And I'm not one of those Christians that like to have a pity party. But you need to believe what God said about you. And you need to get up off your seat. You need to go out there and start balling for the king. Yeah. Right? You do have worth and you do have value. And then we're getting ready to talk about why you have it. Mm-hmm. Why you have uh, this great hope and what God has given you, man? Brandon, you talk about in your book, uh, understanding the gift or the meaning of life. Yeah, break that down because you you talk about worth being understood from that mm-hmm. angle. You talked about this being to have worth and value. Number one, it must be on an unconditional and universal level. Yeah, right. And but that begins with life. Life. Yeah. So are you talking with life, meaning our very existence? Mm -hmm. Or are you talking, we find our worth and value with our purpose? Like, we know why we're here, but do we find (laughs) worth and value in the gifting that God has already did? Or is it just universal from start to finish? Gotcha. Um, So how I kind of progress through the book, like I said, like, like Brent said, once we tackle all the ways that people do find worth and value in mm-hmm. intellect, race, family, social status, all those things. And I kind of debunk why we cannot find worth and value in those things, primarily because they are conditional. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if those things are conditional, whatever we have 
find worth and value must be unconditional. Not only must it be unconditional, but it must be applicable to all men. And the only thing that is applicable to all men that is unconditional and universal is that we all have life. Mm. Um, and so I, I go into where does life come from? Mm -hmm. And so again, um, I, I pit the, the evolutionary worldview up against the biblical worldview mm -hmm. because that's the predominant you know, opposition. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, if I argue from an evolutionary worldview, mm -hmm. I am led to believe that some people just are more have more worth and value than others mm -hmm. you know I am led to believe that and we've seen that throughout history mm -hmm. um, I know this is an extreme case but Hitler oh, you God. know I'm pretty sure most evolutionists would deny the ideology of Hitler but he used evolutionary uh, um, uh, ideals to what the Aryan race is more important than the Jewish race and right. any other people so thus we are doing a service a to service. humanity by exterminating them. Right. Survival of what? The fittest. And even kind of now, we kind of have this evolutionary um, thinking, just white supremacy. And even on the other side, because like I said, I want to remain fair and balanced. Even mm -hmm. those who are, you know, you know, just Afrocentric or mm -hmm. whatever their, their race is, where they elevate their race over another race, right. where we have this evolutionary ideal that my race is superior to another. And so I, again, try to say, hey, this is where your logic leads if you hold to an evolutionary worldview. I clearly don't hold to that. I believe, don't matter what you are, you have worth and value. Why? Because you're made in the image of your creator. Right. Now, as far as your answer or your question, am I talking simply about existence or um, purpose? I think both. Right. Um, because what I do is I say, because like I said, I try to think of the counter argument. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have life. Well, animals have life. <laughs> right. You know. So what makes us different from the animals? Did you go into that in the book? What makes us different from the animals is what we are made in the image of God. Right. Scripture never says an animal is made in the image of God, and so right. because we're made in the image of God, we do have intellect. Right. We do have emotion. Right. We do contribute to society. Right. But those are not what give us worth. But God is what gives us um, worth and value, and so. Coming from that perspective that our worth and value is, is found in God creating us um, is the answer to the question and foundational because, like I said, how I'm going to look at somebody else who, you know, may not be as well off as me. Because I think this is probably one of the favorite quotes that I have in the book is like, you know, the poor person. The poor person contributes to society because the poor person says, even though I am poor, what well, I have worth and value. Right. So that's why we care about the poor because Jesus says, you'll always have the poor with you. Come on, man. The poor is what to remind you that just because I'm well off, it doesn't give Don't me mean. more worth and value than this poor person. Right. That you're to care for that poor person just as you would any other human being or right. also this. Because I And again, I, I don't know if I hit on this in this chapter, but I'm sure I hit on it in other places. Well, people will say, well, if, you know, God created us all, why did he create people with disabilities? You know, mm. why did he create them with deformities? And mm. I say, you, you, you see how you frame the question. Mm -hmm. You frame the question as if the person with deformities and disabilities has less worth and value than right. those who don't. Right. And God creates those people with disabilities and deformities. The same say, worth. They have the just same as much value. worth and value as you. Probably more. <laughs> I'm thinking of a story. Uh, you know, I work in that world of financial services, but I was reading in that story in Mark, man, yeah. where you got this Jesus. Uh, it, uh, Jesus is looking at people give. Uh -huh. As he's looking at them pouring into the bucket, yeah, all these people who are able to give out of abundance are giving. Mm -hmm. and he's being, scripture doesn't say that they're giving out of, you know, uh, uh, what, what would you say, you know, uh, a, a bad attitude, like, uh, you know, hey, I can do this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, they're giving. Yeah, right. But here's a lady that comes with two coins, mm -hmm. two pennies. Yeah. All I got. That's all she got. And Christ says something she, crazy. Uh, go ahead. He says, man, this woman gave out of her poverty. Mm -hmm. When she had nothing. Yeah. This means more mm -hmm. than someone giving out of abundance. Out of abundance yeah. 
Here it is, Christ showing great worth mm -hmm. and value. It, it doesn't matter, man, yeah. if you have abundance or you're poor. The, the great God sees something different. Yeah. He sees this poor woman mm -hmm. coming and giving, yeah. which is crazy. Uh, strikes me, man. It's, this thing that that strikes me, man, out of out of this world, because you know people sitting in the church and man, I can't tithe, I can't give it. Yeah, I don't have it. Yeah, and we say, God knows your heart, <laughs> right? But then we look and say, Hey, man, yeah, God knows my heart, but I know He wants my obedience, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the, the, the worth and value into that. But uh, I was thinking about that story when you said that, man. Yeah. It was just crazy. Uh, so, Brandon, you're talking about life. Mm -hmm. You're talking about it from the existence and the purpose that God is putting on us, which is an incredible thing, man. Uh, let's talk about the rejection mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Um, why is that important in worth and value? Uh, yeah, because... Like I said, you rejecting God, it leads to all the isms, <laughs> elitisms, you know, um, even um, narcissism, because like I said, um, I, I want to Let me read what you said. Oh, you, ahead, said you said, ahead, you said, you said this Here's what you said, because you, you, you talk about Romans 1, 21 through 23. Let yeah. me read it. And it says, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. And then here's what you say in your book, man. You say, uh, let me just go ahead and read that verse because I like it. Uh, this chapter, this uh, paragraph, because I like it. You said, not only do the ungodly and unrighteous suppress the truth, but they have become fools and exchanged the glory. I love that word, exchanged. The glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man in creation. These verses express a truth that is present in every aspect of life. As a result of rejecting God, we witness racism, sexism, classism, elitism, and narcissism, and all types of acts that devalue ourselves and one another. This happens because we find our value in everything other than the one who gives us life. Mm. Beautifully written. Um, there's something worth in that or uh, the Imago Dei, which is the image of God, is a theme that runs heavy through the book. But also another theme, and I'm, I just created it, I, I kind of coined it the great reversal. Um, and so like the next chapter we do is truth. And so what I mean by the great reversal is the spot where the creator should be, we put the creature mm -hmm. uh, excuse me the spot where the creator should be we put creation mm -hmm. so if god doesn't give me worth and value i find it in creation mm -hmm. and that's what we do we mm -hmm. find it in ourselves and our mm -hmm. intellect our clothes mm -hmm. our house our job creation mm -hmm. things that have been created we find it there truth if i don't find truth in god i find it in what so nature yeah. Yeah. we find it in, in creation so we have this nature this, speaks yeah <laughs> we have the, this this great Reversal and like I said, okay, if you want to to um, say forget God, I'm going to find worth and value, whatever. Look at where it leads to. Right. Look at where it leads to. We see all those isms that we just listed. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, just taking race out of the equation, just men and women. Mm -hmm. And again, I kind of talk on it throughout the book. That just even inequality between men and women. Mm -hmm. When I was doing mm -hmm. research for this book, I just realized that women just got the right to vote in like the early 1900s. <laughs> that blows my mind where a woman wasn't even seen as equal to a man that had the same equal rights a as man. a man. And so we like, but wait. When you read Genesis well, she 1... She got equal rights in that bed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. man. It's, like, it's like, what does Genesis... If I say, if you can get the first three chapters of Genesis, you, you pretty much set for life because God says, I created both man and women in my image. Mm -hmm. Not just man, but man and woman. In my image, she is just as equal as you, has the same equal rights as you. Mm -hmm. The Bible done said that, but in 19, I, 
I want to say it's 12. I think like Wyoming was the first state to grant women's rights, and okay. then a couple years later, it became something national. But okay. that's not even that's that's less than 150 years ago. Yeah. That's not that long ago. We've that's not that long ago. That long. <laughs> that, that's not that long ago, and it's like because we have failed to say, "Hey, this woman has worth and value." We right. see all the things that happen. Right. You know. Um, so, like I said, I, I want to be fair and balanced, not just harp on just the race because we're two black guys, right. but just acknowledge injustice even on the part of women, mm -hmm. on the part of poor people, on the part of, of whomever has been a victim of someone not finding worth and value in God. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, these are all things that me, myself, are guilty of um, because it's so easy not to find worth and value in God. It's so easy to find worth and value in, in other things because a lot of the times these things are, are tangible. Um, and so we, we find worth and value in, in everything other than our creator, but we see the results of this um, lived out. All right, man. So, man, this has been one incredible session. And I think it's going to get better, better down the road. Yeah, we too. This has been incredible, man. So let me uh let me let me let me let me close it with this one. Because remember I talked about um, um, the, the secular end result is that worth and value leave with men. Yeah. But not without hope. And I believe that the sacred result of worth and value will always leave us fulfilled because we have the eternal God living inside us and has placed us saturated us with his image. And man, I want to close on a note that really reaches to the heart. I really rarely hear a podcast that takes some pastoral privilege, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm not a pastor. Brandon's not a pastor. But we just want to kind of borrow some pastoral yeah, yeah, privilege yeah, yeah. and uh, just talk to the heart of a person that has God or doesn't have God. You're, you, you, you might be listening to this is brand new to you, yeah. Or you're struggling with this, yeah. And just talk about how to get that worth and value uh, from the gospel. You know, how do you just passion these people, man, to just just the worth and value of the gospel itself? Yeah, absolutely. And I and I just want to be real careful how to frame this because yeah. there is a um, aspect of of the gospel and this is uh last week i wanted to touch on this too when i was talking about the gospel uh being profited and what i meant by that because essentially i'm profiting off selling my book to the gospel um, that's talking about the gospel but i wasn't talking about that i meant kind of watering down the gospel just explaining you know uh half truths about the gospel without addressing um a gospel that that does convict the gospel that talks about God's justice, God's judgment, God's wrath, um, because those are things most people do not want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when I when I'm talking about profiting off the gospel, um, that's what I'm talking about. Those who just say, "Hey, Jesus has a wonderful plan for your life," mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> though that that kind of idea, and so. I think there's an aspect when people present the gospel, they say, man, your life is so well. Everything is going so good. The only thing that you're missing is Christ. Mm -hmm. um, he loves you so much. Mm -hmm. um, if you would just you know, accept him into your heart, everything would be okay. And so they present Christ as the cherry on top of an already fulfilled life. Right. And so I want to be very careful um, because that's a half truth. Um, God does love you. Please, please don't miss that point. Um, but, but we've got to, to understand, um, that it's just rooted in that his love for you, you, you've, like you've said, you've brought absolutely nothing to the table. Um, and so we've got to come from that perspective that it is only Christ's love for you that any of this even matters. Right. Um, and so that, that, that's where you find your worth. We were talking about this before, that if I have a child, I'm not giving my child for someone else. Mm -hmm. But this is what God has done, that he saw, I'm going to set my affections on these people who hate me, who rebel against me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give them the greatest gift 
they can never have. No one has ever done that for you. Right. Your right. mother, your father, your girlfriend, your wife, your spouse. Nobody has ever done that except God for him to give his life because no one can truly give their life because what? Life is borrowed. Life is borrowed. Yeah. The only one who can truly give his life is God because life comes from him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he gave his life. He does not have to do that. Right. He, he does not have to do that. And I kind of end with, you know, like we were talking about in Adam, you know, when we look to Adam and say, you don't have any worth and value because all these things are conditional, they're fading, mm-hmm. or they're just going to fade away. All the riches that you have are going to fade away. Mm-hmm. You know, your value is in what Christ Christ says, look to me, look to that cross. Right. You want to know how valuable you are? Look to the cross and look to the Christ, the price that was paid for you. Look to it and pick it up. Look to it because it's like, who name someone who has done anything remotely close to what God has done for you? Nobody. Nobody, Nobody has done anything remotely close to what God has done, and um, and that's where you 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 find your joy, your satisfaction, and that someone loved me so much, not because of anything that I've done, mm-hmm. solely because He sought to set His affections on me. That this person loved me so much that he gave up his life for me. You have never done that. And no one has ever done that for you except Christ. That's right. Um, so so you can relish in that because it's like so many things, like like I said, creating a book, um, wanting people to read it, you know, am I to find worth and value that, hey, nobody really cares about what I'm doing? But it's like, no, my creator cares. Look what he's done. Right. You know, why am I going to find any joy and satisfaction and man only six people got my number you know mm-hmm. you know like that's not where my joy and satisfaction comes from my joy and satisfaction comes from what Christ has done and therefore I try to tell people if someone doesn't listen then someone doesn't listen but right. if someone does praise be to God those right. people who purchase the book they're going to be blessed right. hopefully more will, will buy it but even six six million people buy it my 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 uh, worth is not dependent on that, on that. Right. my worth is dependent on what Christ has done because he cares he has set his affection on me, and no, I've never experienced that kind of love from anyone, and will ever experience that kind of love from anyone but my Savior and my Creator. Uh, I love what you say here, man. You, you just Brandon, you say that uh, you state if you find value and worth in the approval of men, uh, we do whatever it takes to please them. But if we find our value and worth in God, we dedicate our lives to Him. Man, this is incredible, man. Yeah, uh, and this is just the first chapter. I'm trying to, like, <laughs> somebody, um, I've been blessed. Somebody from my job has been reading the book. Mm-hmm. She said she's on chapter 15. I was wow. Like, oh, wow. She's like, I can't put it down. I was like, man, that, that, that that's great. And, I, you know, you want to be, like, humble with it, but, right. like, it gets better. Right. It gets better. Right. You know, because, I'm like I said, I'm writing these truths, and they get reckoned within me. Um, and we get deep. Um, we, we get really deep next. These first couple chapters, they they're surface. They're they're surface. Yeah, surface they're foundational. Foundational. Yeah. But um, we get heavy, and like I said, I, I wanted to to hit on a lot of things. So there's going to be some chapters you feel, some chapters you don't. But there's going to be at least one chapter that's gonna that's gonna resonate with you. Um, but for me, all of these chapters uh, are special to me because they bring out. Um, some sort of aspect that we we don't really deal with. So next week is truth. Truth. Um, that Uh-oh. one, that 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 again is a foundation of one truth. Right. Um, and then even after that is love, and then fear. Um, and as we progress, we get we get deeper and deeper. Um, I think one of the ones that might stir a little people is uh, why do we disagree? <laughs> um, so we we hit on you know the the major disagreements that we have and just trying to filter that, you know, mm-hmm. biblically and then again going back to the gospel. So um I look forward to to going through these chapters. Um pray that they uh bless you because like I said this 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 one was heavy, you know, yeah. just, just, just doing all worth and foundation worth man. and worth and value. But the the ones coming after, um brace yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brace yourself because because uh 
like I said, I, I try to handle these topics um, with grace, but I tried not to, you know, um, skate around the issue. I tried to hit it head on um, and just be real about it. And I think what people will like about it is that I try to be fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be critical of the atheists, but I also try to be critical of those in my camp as well mm -hmm. that I think we have attributed to a lot of the problems that we see, especially um given our cultural climate, just i.e. the election, you know, there's a lot of people who believe what I believe theologically, but socially we're miles apart. Miles apart. Um, how do we, how do we uh, find unity among that? Um, so, so I, I try to be balanced, even, you know, bringing up myself as an example of, of one who has failed. Um, so I think, that'll resonate with people a lot that I'm not coming from like sitting on my high ho my high horse. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, uh, poking holes in those who disagree with me, but poking right. holes in those who, who do, you know, align with me. Like I said, um, last week I brought up the fact that many of the church fathers were only slaves, right. you know? And so not ignoring that fact um, of, our Christian history, right. that, that that was a reality. So like I said, just my my allegiance um, is not to a denomination. My allegiance is to Christ. My allegiance is to justice and to right. truth. Right. And so I, I'm going to try to be objective mm -hmm. in dealing with these things uh, coming from, from both sides of the coin. So I look forward to these next coming weeks. Um, again, enjoy the podcast is on soundcloud itunes um i'll throw up uh clips of the video um just as little promos um little teasers for you guys to check out um but this podcast will drop january 1st um so we'll be a little behind just so uh we, we have a lot recorded so we can just give you stuff out on a consistent basis so Again, thanks to Brent. Um, thanks to his wife for just uh, you know just allowing him to just give up his uh, his Saturday morning to yeah. to be be sure to tell um, Demi and Ross thanks. Um, but I think we are out. Um, Brent, you want to close us out? Sure will. Hey, until uh, we meet again, friends. Stay true to the Word of God. That's true to the primary call He has on your life. That's my message to this generation. And those listening to this wonderful God given podcast, <laughs> let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to talk about work and value. Father, I hope that this was valuable uh, to someone. And I hope that even if it just reaches one person, we've done our job in terms of being vessels for you. All we want to do is communicate your truths, Father. So we are available uh, to be used by you and your spirit of leading. Your agenda trumps anything that we have uh, in our life. And Father, I'm just praying for those struggling to find work and value in you. I'm praying for those who don't know you, that they can be uh, revealed uh, uh, the true living God. And we pray that you'll place someone in their life, Father, that you may share the gospel message with them and not let them uh, leave this earth without knowing who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Out. Peace.